ברכותי מוהר"ן, תורה מ"ז. וכשפוגם באמת, בא אמת, and when a person is defecting the truth, בכלליות הגוונין, in all of the colors, means that he doesn't believe in the truth, he doesn't believe in himself, he doesn't believe that Hashem ידברך, he loves him. אזי נעשה מכלליות הגוונין בושה, so then he feels ashamed. And he's ashamed of his actions, and he's ashamed of his wisdom, and he's ashamed of his look, and he's ashamed on his house, and he's ashamed on his family, and he's ashamed on his everything, on his voice, on because he's defecting the truth. And he feels a disgrace, he feels ashamed, he feels horrible with himself. But it's all a lie. It's only because you're denying the truth. that you're beautiful. You defected the shades, the colors of your soul. You defected the truth. And the truth is that everything is perfect, that Hashem loves you. And because that you doubt that amazing concept, you just can't see it. You gave a place for doubts to question on Hashem's loving kindness, on the Creator's loving kindness. So you gave that, uh, that dark angel the, the, the permission to, to destroy. But the truth is that Hashem is good and that there is nothing except of Him. That's the, the, the only truth that there is. And all of the rest, that it's all of our lives, it's a lie. You're eating and you're lying to yourself. You're drinking and you're lying to yourself. You're choosing clothes and you're lying to yourself. You sit to learn Torah and you're lying to yourself. Because you have selfish thoughts while doing it. And I'm not saying negative, bad. I'm not saying you're lying. It just The fact is that you're lying to yourself. If you think that something is wrong and maybe you need to change your shirt. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I don't think you shouldn't change your shirt. I'm just saying that we, as long as we distract our thoughts from the complete, infinite truth that everything is perfect and good and Hashem is sweet and He loves us so much, except of that, all of the rest is lies. It's all a lie. It's all a lie. It's all 100% lie. You're lying to yourself when you think that you are wrong, when you think that you're not able, when you think that it's going to take time. All of those thoughts are, it's, 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 it's heretic, it's kfirah. You're denying the existence of the Creator. Yesterday I met And thank God, I'm, I'm bringing those situations to myself. Hashem Yidwach is, is, is bringing those things to me because, because I'm searching for the truth. And everyone that asks for the truth, he will receive it. That's the problem with, you asked for it. It's like, if you said in a mistake to Hashem Yidwach, please Hashem, I want to know you, you're done. You're finished. That's it. You will, you will see how far you are from Him. You're gonna, you, if you made that mistake and you open your mouth and you said to Hashem, bring me closer, it's a done deal. Now you can be like Yonah, you can argue, you can run away. Okay, so a whale gonna swallow you and gonna puke you after three days of being in his guts. But after three days, you're gonna go and do your job. Not as clean, not as pure, not as holy as you assumed you were five, five hours before, three days before. But to the truth you're going to reach, the truth you're going to see, you're going to hear it. Because you asked for it. Because Hashem is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. And me, I made that mistake several times in my life. And I was very demanding also about it. And I didn't know where I'm uh, getting myself into. And I thought that it's, uh, the pleasure is, uh, is right around the cor corner. Oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say to Hashem that I want the truth and then I'm gonna be righteous. You're not aware 
to the mountains of waste that are waiting for you in that path of clarification, clar clarifying for yourself who you are, understanding who you are. You don't understand with how much filth you're going to have to deal while actually reaching the truth. So it's a very painful process reaching the truth, but in the end the truth is, is waiting for you. And it's also, it's a real amazing process of reaching to the truth, but you need to go through your selfish being. You need to deal, to confront your fears, to see how low, how lazy, how filthy, how far, how ungrateful you are, how fast you're lying to yourself and to your family, to everyone, how, how far you are from the truth. You want to, re to reach from point A to point B, okay, so you need to start in point A. Your journey will finish in point B, no problem, but the journey starts at point A. And it can take you 17 years to, to make one third of that way. And you can regret 7,000 times while dealing with point A. Because one hour before you asked for the truth, point A was your bubble. Everything is cool. You have a little bit stress, so okay, no problem. Alcohol, you just need to be over 18 or to have fast hands, it's not a problem. You can run away to drugs, you can run away for, to television, to music, to habits, to sports, to, to what. it's not a problem to run away from your problems when you're stuck in point A. You can run in circles, there's no problem. You go to the closest stadium and you run in circles and you imagine, yeah, I'm I'm Greek, I'm an athlete, I'm sports, I'm this, I'm a singer, I'm a rapper, I'm a break dance dancer, I'm a, 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 whatever. You, everyone will do his thing. I'm in college, I'm learning. Okay, so once in two weeks, in three days, you're going to wet your pillow with your boiling tears, feeling bad about how much you're lying to yourself. But after crying for an hour, okay. I can go again to the espresso bar, to the, to, the, to the coffee shop, to another trip to Amsterdam. I'm gonna, gonna throw everything behind. It's, it's, it's very easy to be in that place. But when you decide to move out from point A to point B, from point of lying to yourself, to be honest with yourself, to find the truth, that that is the spiritual process. That is the spiritual development. That's the way that you will find the Creator. And there is no higher level than that, than Shiviti Hashem Lenagdit Amid, to see Hashem, the Creator, with you always. There is nothing more to Avodat Hashem than that. And all of Torah Mitzvot, learning, putting tefillin, covering yourself with talit, having mezuzah on your doors, on your... Mashkof, door, doors. What? Or post over there. All of those things are things to remind you, coming to remind you that Hashem is with you. But Hashem is with you without the mezuzah also. Hashem is with you without that feeling also because me, Hashem Barach, for example, he woke me up before I, I cared about mezuzah, before I cared about feeling, and Hashem was already talking to me. So the love of the Creator is an unconditional love. It's just, He loves you, for sure. And every way that you're going to attach yourself to the Creator that will be an external way, through learning Mara, through putting tefillin, through keeping Shabbat, everything that you do with your physicality, with your body, will always make that love between you and the Creator as a love that depends in something, in Shabbat. Okay, if I haven't kept Shabbat, so I defected the love between me and Hashem. If I haven't put filin, so I defected the love somehow between me and Hashem. Oh, it can be worse. If I haven't put filin, so it means that Hashem Yitbarachi didn't help me to put filin, so it means that Hashem Yitbarachi doesn't love me. Those are the bent minds of the believers, the twisted minds of the believers, so-called. Yeah, if I haven't learned Hashem, if Hashem didn't help me to learn, that's an... A love that depends in something. 
that if that thing been cancelled, so it cancels the love. Love that depends in something, depends in your learning, depends in Kedusha, in purity, in holiness, in Shabbat, in finishing Shabbat in time of Rabbeinu Tam, on guarding your eyes, on being holy. It's a love that depends in something. So if you will fall from that level, the love been cancelled. So that's not the real love. The only real love that there is, that it's an unconditional love, it's the love that you have inside of yourself, the one that you know that the Creator, He was redeeming me, saving me, helping me, when I was in the lowest place of hell. And there He revealed His un 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 unconditional love. Because He was kissing me on my head when all of my body was, was covered with, 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 with filth, with waste. With, with contamination. When I was a disgrace by the, 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 the who, whoever that putting himself allowed to judge me and look at me and he will say, filthy, far, uh, stupid, ignorant, whatever, contaminated, great. But I saw that in that place Hashem loved me. Not because of my learning, because I was not learning. Not because of that feeling, because I couldn't care less about feeling. Not because of my charity, because I was running after money. Not because of my Shabbatot, because I, I was eating pork chops in Shabbos, in a restaurant in, in, in outside Tchum Shabbat, outside of the area of Shabbat, or inside. So, that is the real love of the Creator. That's the truth. So if Hashem Barach, that his seal is a seal of truth, Chotamo Emet, and he's saying the truth, he is the truth, Hashem Elokechem Emet, Hashem, he is the truth, and he's telling you, I love you. So how can you not love yourself, except of if you're going to lie to yourself? If you have issues with yourself, you can't stand yourself, you want to kill yourself, you, you want to, to, to scratch your face out of anger, frustration, being so dumb, so stupid. You're lying to yourself right now. That is the lie. That is the mistake. That's how you being heretic, kofer in Hashem Barach. that's how you have foreign thoughts on Hashem. Like something is wrong with you. If something is wrong with you, so something is wrong with Hashem. If something is wrong with Hashem, so how can you say that He is good if He is wrong? One is right. And you check yourself and you say, okay, I'm not right. Great. Perfect. Who is right? Hashem is right? Great. But Hashem is Barach now that he is right, he's telling you, I love you. My brother, my wife, my daughter. He called you in all of the names. My mother even, he called us. So he's calling you with all of those names that are just showing affection and love. And, and he misses you, he yearns to be with you, and he's asking when they're going to come back to me. What he means to come back? To come back to love me. Just to open their eyes, to see how much I love them. That's the only issue here. Ahava, love, unconditional love. But we're basing our lives on fears, on our old memories, on, on our anxieties, and, and afraid. Afraid of what? Like we said yesterday and the day before, what? To live in a house without electricity? Are you afraid of the darkness? You're not afraid of the dark. You're afraid of that horrible feeling inside of you. Hashem doesn't love me. Why? Because it's a lie. You're afraid of the lie. You're afraid of the fear. You're afraid of that, the fact that you sinned, that you messed up as Adam Arishon, as Chava, as a person that been divided from the truth by sinning and it's already happened and you're terrified from that moment in your past life in a different world in heaven began Eden Mikedem from that place you're afraid you're terrified to upset a shame you couldn't deal with that shame with that mistake and you're taking it for lifetimes again and again and again and you see it in your wife and you see it in your children and you see it in your ex and you see it with your boss and you see it with your company and you see it with your car and you see it in the garage and it's only Hashem Barach telling you all of the time the same thing I 
love you. Come back. That's the, all, all of the discussion. That's all of the story. There is nothing more to it. I love you. Finish. Hashem Yidbarach is justifying himself all of the time through the Bible with the prophets. Justifying. Hashem, what's going on? You need to explain yourself to someone? The Gemara is asking, how can it be that it's written, the angels, the Gemara is telling us the, the conversation between the angels to the Creator. The angels are saying to Hashem Yidbarach, how can it be that you are no sepanim le'ele, that you care what they think about you? Why you care what they think? Who cares what they think? It's human beings, it's people, the liars. Why you care so much? It's written on you, Hashem, Lo isa panim leish, that he's not, he doesn't care about no one. He's just saying the truth and that's it. But to Am Israel, he cares what they think about him. All of the time, justifying himself and explaining himself and calling us, please come back and listen and I'm going to tell you, what's going on with you, Hashem? Why are you flattering them? Why are you, 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 you trying to, to, to convince them? They don't want you, so that they will go to hell. What's the problem? Who cares? Why you care? So Hashem Baruch is saying, How can I not care what they will think about me? Echlo Hashem is asking. If I commanded them to do something, one thing, and they took more on themselves to do, I told them, it's talking over there about the amounts of food that Hashem Yidbarach said to us, you need to eat and until you will be full. And then when you will be full, you feel that you ate enough. Then you're obligated from the side of the Torah to bless Hashem. And they took on themselves that even if they eat an amount of an olive or as an egg, they're already going to say bracha. What? If they care about me so much to bless me, even before they owe me something, before I commanded them, so that's grace, that's kindness. So if they are acting with me in such kindness, how do you want me not to care what they think about me? So you need to understand the situation here. The situation is so pure and clean and so innocent. And that's the relationship with the Creator. I told you a friend of mine came to my house a few days ago, five minutes before sunset, and he looked at me and he told me I didn't put filin today. I told him, great, here is my filin, put them. He said, no, I won't. I told him, why not? You have more, five more minutes, put filin. He said, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to. I told him, why? He said, it's not going to change my life. And that's a man of truth. And I'm not saying not to put fill in. I put fill in this morning. And in that day that that person came to my house, I put fill in in that morning. And I'm going to put fill in hopefully come tomorrow. Also, and all, all, all of my life, hopefully I'll put fill in. Why? Because I believe that I should put fill in. But that person was holding a point of truth. He doesn't care about putting fill in or not putting fill in. That's not why he did shiva. That's not why he's bringing himself to, to serve Hashem, to be religious. To fulfill his obligation, putting fill in. That's not the purpose of our life. To put fill in. It's an obligation. Yes, we are obligated. Yes, we want to. He wants so. Also, he wants to. But he understands that what that he is desiring is closeness to the Creator. And not to fulfill his obligation by putting fill in. Who cares about those lies? It's a lie. To feel good with myself by putting tefillin, it's a lie. Until you're going to know that Hashem it Barach and you are one, you cannot feel good. You cannot be happy. How can you keep on justifying yourself while you know that God is missing? While you know that God is hiding? How can you accept on yourself to say, I'm happy, I'm religious, yes, I'm doing great. You're doing great? My sister is drowning in the river. Why are you talking about great? It's my sister. It's not your sister. You forgot that it's your sister. She's drowning now in coffee beans in LA. Yes, she is literally drowning now in coffee beans in LA. That's what she's going through now. And it's my sister. Brother, it's my sister. She's dreaming to become a supermodel. And she thinks, how is she going to make surgeries for that? And she's drowning. 
in front of the computer and in front of horror movies. that make her fall into those lies, into a world of lies, into a world of, of, of imaginations, to be separated from the Creator. And she cannot stand it. I know her, how sensitive she is, how cute she is, how nice she is, how good she is, how much she just wants to, be, to, be, uh, to feel good. What she wants? Why she's doing it? Why she wants to be so pretty? Because everyone told her you're ugly and she saw that when people said to that woman that she was beautiful, so she was tall, so she was, I don't know what, blonde, brunette, if she had those eyes, that breast, that behind, and that's it. And she lost her mind because she realized no one will ever going to say to me that I'm beautiful. I must work out. I must go and, 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 and botox my lips. Yes, sick. Why? Because she cannot see her beauty. Why she cannot see the beauty? Because there is a snake, a rattlesnake, that is wrapping her, and this is this world of lie, that is wrapping her with lies and lies, until you will be blonde, no one will love you, until you're going to have big breasts, no one will love you, until you will uh, laugh in a funny laugh, you're no one going to like you, until you're going to be this, no one going to like you, until you're going to marry a millionaire, a billionaire, no one going to like you, and hey, guys, it's my sister. I can't let her stay in this place. I'm sorry. Maybe you can. I'm not able to. This is why I'm touring to LA and to Colombia, Bogota, and to New York, and to Venice Beach, and to, to, to all of the rest of the stations along the way. Why? Because it's my sister that is drowning over there. And you need to join me. Because on that we're going to be asked in, the, in Judgment Day. How could you let your sister drown over there? How did you let your wife drown over there? How did you give up? How you let them drown? That's the only question that uh, uh, Hashem will ask you why I didn't put fill in. If you think so, I don't know. I don't, I, 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 don't, I, I, I don't think so. If I have two things now to do, to put fill in or to save lives, what's the Allah is saying? What the rules are saying? You need to save life. Great. If you need to keep Shabbat or you need to save lives, so what is the Allah is saying? Pikuach nefesh doche Shabbat. You need to, keep, to save lives and not to keep Shabbat. Okay, now you need to, the Gemara is telling us about people, righteous people that dress themselves as foreign, as, as, as non-Jews, and were going and working for years in prison of the kingship of the Malchut of, of Rome, Working, disguising themselves as goyim, as non-Jews, to work as prisoners, as as a, as a, sorry, um, officers in the prison, to that they will have the ability to watch over the Jewish women that that been arrested over there, and for years. And Eliyahu Navi is testifying. You see that person, he going to have eternal life in the world to come. So the righteous man that heard that asked Eliyahu Navi, why him? Looks like a goy. Does, he doesn't look like a Jew. He doesn't wear tzitzit. He doesn't have a kippah. He's, he, he's taking off his beard. He looks like a goy. He's foreign. He's going to have life in the world to come. Eliyahu Navi told him, go talk to him. Go. Ask him. So that righteous man, I think it was Rabbi Yoshua, went over him and asked him, hey, who are you? What are you doing? He told him, it's a secret. I'm a Jew. I'm working in the prison over there I'm protecting the women that they will not going to be raped there was a woman over there and the, 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 the men, the criminals in the prison they wanted to rape her so I took something and I spilled on her that they're going to think that she have blood and if they're going to think that she have blood so they won't try to, 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 to touch it they're going to be disgusted from her and this is how I did it and, and he's telling crazy life that's how you live? yes that's how I live and if you're asking me, that's how you live? So the answer is yes, that's exactly how I live. Exactly. So I went, like I told you in the beginning, I'm bringing those situations to myself, and I went to do it Bodhidut yesterday night, and instead of broadcasting live to you on Facebook, so I met a person, and, I start, and he started talking to me, and I answered these questions, and suddenly comes that young... 26 years old, drunk 
guy and he's talking to us and he's he just took all of my faith and just shaked it he just shown me Hashem was showing it to me that I, I don't believe that I that my faith is uh, that I don't believe in Hashem that I don't have faith in Hashem that I don't trust Hashem and he was talking about the fire and he was talking about the the government and he was talking about the 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 settlement Amona and he was talking about everything that he just could talk out after drinking so much vodka and beer and uh, Red Bull yesterday now and that that was the discussion on that we were talking while he was swinging and talking but then he asked me he said have you you seen the fire in Haifa you've been there I told him no he said I was there and I'm telling you that and he's cursing himself and he's cursing the world and he doesn't care I won't I won't repeat it it's not important but with all of his slang with all of the filthy mouth that he could use He's saying, I was there, and I saw, and you see the fire is burning, one house, second house, third house, and then jumping above the, the next house, and burning the next, one and the next. And you look at this house, and you ask yourself, why the fire was jumping above that house? All of the houses in that line been burned, except of the one in the center. Why that one didn't got burned? So I told him, because Hashem didn't want that house to be burned. So he told me, okay, you believe? I told him, yes, yes. He said, me, I don't believe. And I'm going to ask you something. You believe that if a person believes in Hashem, so he going to succeed? So I told him, yes, I was arrogant. I thought that I can back myself up. I thought I can answer, of course. I told him, yes. He said, and you're succeeding always? I told him, no. He said, why? I, call, I told him, because I don't believe. He said, yes, but after you see that Hashem is jumping above this house, how can you not believe? And he's drunk, he's got patience, he can talk with me for hours. And he's looking, staring my eyes, and he's saying, okay, so how you answer? Why, why don't you answer? What's your answer? I told him, probably I don't believe. So he's asking me again, yeah, why? I'm asking you, why? And I don't have the answer. I'm just standing in Paris, understanding that I really don't believe. And he's not afraid to ask those questions. And I am afraid to ask those questions. And he's closer to Hashem than I. And I'm religious, and I'm wearing my peot, and I'm wearing my beard, and I'm wearing my kippah, and I'm wearing all of my armors, all of my weapons, my ptil tchelet, my tzitziyot, and vayule totafot ben, and everything I have. 100% all of my equipment, my uniform, AA, complete. But I'm weak and he's strong, and he's not afraid to curse and he's not afraid to argue, and he's not afraid to question, and he's not afraid to doubt, and he was ready to learn. And I went to do tshuva, and he went to celebrate. You can claim to be religious, you can claim to be righteous, until you're really going to make an investigation into the depths of your soul, to stand in front of yourself, to confront your fears, and to admit, I'm afraid. I think that Hashem doesn't love me. I think that Hashem Barach, He can't stand me. I think that Hashem Barach, He forgot about me. I think that Hashem Barach, He whatever. Until you're going to come to those understandings and going to find the power to work on that, to what? To do what with them? To try that Hashem. It's all a lie. We just explained it. It's a lie. How can you not believe after that you see Hashem? After that you once saw an unloving kindness the 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 that's not what I wanted to say. The 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 love love the unconditional love of Hashem Barach. If you felt it once in your life, it needs to wash and purify all of your life. It needs to purify you completely. If you touch the light once, that's it. Once, that's it. You saw God once in your life. You saw that it's not a coincidence. You saw the supervision. 
You saw the individual private supervision in your life. You saw a miracle. You saw that you were praying and you've been answered once. It should wash you from all of the filth, from all of the contamination. And if it haven't, it's only because you haven't completed your investigation. Because in the end of that investigation, you're going to reach the truth. But like we said before, the process to go from point A to point B can take you 15 years, 17 years, 25 years, maybe even 120. In the end, you're going to see the truth. The only thing that we can do is never to give up. Is always to accept on ourselves the rebukes and the lessons and the insultings and the shames. And I came back home and I went to sleep and everything was perfect and I woke up in the morning and I was helping my kids to arrange themselves. I'm taking one of them to kindergarten. I came back home and my wife is looking at me and she's saying, you know, I think you don't have no faith at all. I think you don't believe in anything you claim to believe. And I'm looking at her like that. And it's simple. How the hell she can know? <laughs> because Hashem Yidvarach is talking to you. You think you're the boss, you think you have faith, you think you have something, you think you have power. Throw all kinds of lies and count only on Hashem and let Hashem speak to you. And after her telling me those things, I admitted. And we sat and we had a long conversation and I was crying for over 30 minutes this morning, sitting in my bed and crying like a baby. Why? Because you cannot lie to yourself. And if you choose to lie to yourself, so you're going to keep on being a liar. You're, who is a liar? A person that is lying. If you want to lie to yourself, so you will be called a liar. Means you will always going to be far from Hashem. But if you're going to start saying the truth, as painful as it is, as it is so you're lazy. You're lazy. You, you, you are lazy. What do you want? You, you don't want to talk about it? You're going to stay lazy. You have your desires, you have your lusts, you have your fear, you have your lack of confidence, you're far from Hashem, you're thinking bad thoughts about yourself, bad thoughts about Hashem. You don't see the greatness and the glory and the beauty and how wonderful and infinite and beautiful really is. You don't see that. Your eyes are covered, your eyes are blocked. You cannot really see that. You don't really think that Hashem Yidvachi loves you. You can claim, yeah, I know Hashem loves me. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. When people are telling me I have fear from heaven, I'm laughing. I'm, it's a joke for me. You tell me I love Hashem. Rav Shalom once told us in class, he said, I cannot sing Hashem. He said, I never sing that song. The Creator, we love you. He said, I can never sing this song. It's a lie. I can say to you, Hashem, Yidbarach, I love you? It's a lie. I can sing, Hashem, Yidbarach, you love us. That I can sing. To say that I love you, Hashem, it's a lie. I cannot say that. It's a commandment. You should love Hashem. Okay, that, with that I can connect myself. I want to love Hashem. I want to want to love Hashem. I want to want to want to want to want to love Hashem. That's I want. I really do. I want to want to want to want to want to love Hashem.